Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Cinema Gems. Tonight, guys, we're going to be taking a look at a 1997 drama film directed by Gus Van Sant, which is called Goodwill Hunting. So basically, this story focuses on Will Hunting, a man you, the last man you'd expect to be a map genius. Brilliant. He writes a brilliant question one day, which gets the attention of a very uh, well-received professor played by... Stellan Skarsgård, man. Stellan Skarsgård. I get their names mixed up all the time. Yeah. And unfortunately, he gets into trouble one day to the point where a judge orders him to get help from a psychologist before he has to throw him away in jail for good. Yeah, for now, of course, Will Hunty doesn't want help from a psychologist, and he doesn't like being told what to do. It seems like he doesn't really care that he's really smart anyways, really. Well, he doesn't really care about... He's kind of been taught that throughout life, just to live a normal life like every other schmuck, work a shitty job like every other person. That he, When he gets a brilliant opportunity, he's kind of like, well, what's the big deal? I kind of like where I am now. Pretty it's very much. understandable. He never comes off as a selfish asshole. He always has a good reason for thinking that way. And not just with his dark past, which I won't spoil for those who haven't seen it. Yeah. But also, just because of how he was brought up. It yeah. just makes much more sense. Yeah. Like, in the environment kind of also is mm -hmm. that kind of, of Boston thing. environment. And strangely enough, I'm not a, the biggest fan of Ben Affleck, but he actually surprised me an awful lot <laughs> with his uh, charisma in that. He definitely feels like a good friend. Like, for most of the movie, he kind of bugs his uh, friend and makes fun of him a lot, but... Near the end of the movie, there's a really great monologue he at a workstation. Up. He opens up to him, right? He opens up and tells the truth, the hard truth that nobody else seems to do. While you're staying on Wayne lo uh, lottery ticket, and you're just too scared to take it. Exactly. He's basically telling his friend, you need a man up. You've got this some gift. Mm -hmm. Use it. And it's not all about you, necessarily. It's about the others that want a better life for you, as well. It still feels like an early 2000s movie, though. That could just be with the writing, man. It seems a little ahead of the curve, really. Mm -hmm. Timeless. Oh, definitely. Which is weird, because it was just made by two boys in Boston in their apartment, pretty much. And it does almost feel like that at times, like, especially with the bond between uh, Ben Affleck's character and his family. Well, not his family, but his with friends, friends with yeah. Matt Damon. There's a very natural feel to it, and they're the kind of friends who joke around a lot and give each other a lot of shit, but deep down... You can tell they really care about each other. That's just Boston for you, though, man, honestly. <laughs> Basically, in a general way, if you had to say something really that encapsulates Good Will Hunting, it would be about that it's the perfect film in terms of writing, pretty much. It definitely captures the uh, mean-spirited uh, nature of Boston quite nicely, and, and it, both its dialogue and its characters. And it also captures a lot of the complexities of a lot of the characters. It even goes against a lot of melodramatic cliches, like characters, you know, struggling to get what they want. You know, maybe they don't always know what they want in life. Exactly. Or female characters who are just get mad at their loved ones for no reason. Well, she's just trying to understand Will, but he's always pushing her away, pretty much. Because he doesn't really want anyone to get too close to him, really. No. To find out about him, really. And that's yeah. also why I like Robin Williams' character in a whole lot, because... He's sort of like, he doesn't want to force himself on it. He knows to take his time with Will, pretty much. Mm -hmm. That's what every other psychiatrist <laughs> fails to do. And the way it captures that is just really fascinating to me. Well, also, I love that speech when he's in the park where he basically tells Will off saying, like, I know who you are. You just pretend to be smart, but you're really just a scared shitless kid, pretty much. <laughs> and also that laugh between Matt Damon and, Will's, and Robin Williams that she made the dog wake up. She would fart from her sleep. <laughs> that was real, actually, because I don't know what happened, but Robin Williams, like, had a way of just cracking up everyone, everybody on set, pretty much. Oh, of course. I heard they had to cut the camera a few times during the set because the cast and crew would just break out laughing during that scene. Which is a lot about what made Robin really a really good actor in that because he's got this maternal warmth and it makes me sad thinking about how he's gone now pretty much. I think it makes everybody sad that he's gone now. It's just, yeah. The film almost feels like a memoriam to him at this point. But, um, what do you have to think? I mean, what I really think about this film is that it's sort of like the film that a lot of people look to when they think about really good writing pretty much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Classic example. Psychology and characters. Psychology, characters, and 
it seems to be very uh, internal also, which is what a lot of writers like to do. This movie made me cry. What made me cry was the scene with Robin Williams when he tells Matt Damon, it's not your fault. And he kept on saying it. And it really hit me deep because I related to Matt Damon's character a lot. And for melodrama, this film actually does a pretty good job of avoiding a lot of melodrama cliches. You know, you get characters in a lot of melodramas that want something and they work really hard to get what they want, but this character is given a great opportunity, but he doesn't chase after it like a lot of very typical melodramatic heroes do, but he's like, I don't necessarily want to do this in my life. I want my life to go in a different direction. Exactly. And not to mention his love interest, when they get into a fight later on in the movie, it's, you know, she isn't calling him in a, it's, they aren't really fighting about much. It's, it's just, more so Will Hunting pushing her away, and she doesn't really know why. She's not like, oh, this is all your fault. She's, why are you saying stuff like this? I swear that British accent is fake, though. Yeah. Nobody believes me, but I swear that accent he's basically is fake. He's basically crying out for help. In, that but he, in a way, but he's almost like too afraid to really open himself, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all in all, this is actually a movie that deserves the critical praise. I will give it a 9 out of 10. So in conclusion, how would you, what would you say about this film? Like, the writing in this film is top notch and yeah, let's be honest, it is pretty predictable, but it's just how it handles its predictable story that impresses me every single time I watch it. So what would you have to say if you had to rank it? Um, I'd say I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Okay, well, I'd have to say that I really like the characters. They're very subtle, complex, and they don't really feel fake at all, really. No. Like, these feel like real, emotionally warm characters, pretty much. And the writing, as I say, is top-notch, and surprisingly, it actually looks really nice also. Like, I don't mm. think this was really shot with the biggest budget in the world, but it was shot with an adequate budget, and they used it to their advantage. Yeah, this very easily could have been a, uh, <laughs> yeah. like a movie that might as well be a play, but given the unique filmmaking in the film, like, there's a brilliant scene that I did an analysis on, even, where the scene where he's saying, you're just a kid, you don't understand that yet. It's not just the dialogue that's bringing us two together, it's the camera. That's slowly panning away from Robert Williams and putting Matt Damon in the frame. I mean, right next see to his emotion on full scale, pretty much. And, and Matt Damon's emotion slowly coming into frame, like his emotional connection slowly exactly. coming together. So because of that, I'm going to give this film a 9 out of 10. So well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, click that fancy like button and that fancy bell button to <laughs> get notified for future videos. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and we even have a Patreon page. So if you like our videos and want to see more, maybe spend a dollar or two on the Patreon page. We're, yeah. always, we're always there to listen out to you guys. Maybe right? Thomas will even cook something for you. I highly doubt it, but you never know. <laughs> Alright, thank you guys for watching. Alright, see you later, guys. See you guys next time. Take care.